At Small Teams Big Impacts, we're looking for companies that can help your small team have a huge impact in the world. And why would you waste your time coding up uh, authentication and single sign-on and all that stuff that doesn't matter to your business? Why not just give it to somebody like Janrain? I'm Larry Drivas, CEO and founder of Jan Rain. We're a Portland-based startup and we do user management. And uh, how did you get into this world? Uh, so I moved to uh, Portland, Oregon from the Bay Area. I'd done a couple startups in the Bay Area and uh, we ran into OpenID in Portland and we uh, spent a lot of time on that as an identity play. And uh, the closer we got to identity, we found out it's a huge problem. And uh, we carried that into developing SaaS services that a website can use to um, make that problem really go away. Yeah. Uh, on more and more websites, I'm seeing these uh, sign-in bars that say sign in with Facebook or Twitter or enter your username and password and stuff like that. Is that what you guys do? It is. That is the tip of our platform, the authentication piece. And what you're saying is have the user come in with an account they already have rather than create a brand new account with a brand new registration form. And it's great for a website and it's great for the end user. And so. How do I, as a website de developer, or it's not even a website anymore, it's like we were talking about to, uh, about Echo uh, yesterday, you're building these uh, apps or these things that have moving data streams, and it's not really a website anymore. It, and it can be on your iPhone, it can be on your uh, Android phone, right? Exactly. I think a uh, you know, website is sort of a, a conglomeration of, of several components, and more and more of those are being outsourced. And so user management and authentication is something that can now be outsourced. Very simple for a website to integrate. You know, it's a couple APIs. We, we have some UI widgets that uh, you can use right out of the box or you can craft your own. And uh, really, our service acts as a proxy on behalf of your website. So uh, you do the small integration with us, and then we worry about integrating with the 25 providers that are out there. And, um, and as you know, those providers change all the time. Those yeah. APIs are, are different week to week, and uh, that's really Generate's problem. We stay on top of that, new data comes available. Uh, we make that available to our customers, and it's sort of an evergreen type process. So let's say I'm building a new business, uh, I don't know, so something like a recipe site or whatever, and I need people to be able to sign into my site, and I need to be able to know who they are, right? You know, Rocky Perfect. Barbenica showed up to my site and is interacting with my cooking site. Right? Perfect. So the Janrain platform will take you from authentication to storing that data to giving you ways you can use that data. And that's really, um, you know, you're going to start this recipe site. You don't want to spend the first three months uh, with this brilliant idea working on those pieces which look the same everywhere. And so, uh, you know, chip, put that off your checklist on the first day and then get on to your unique content or your unique utility. So how do I pay for this and then how do I code it? How do I put I uh, authentication into my website? Yeah, or? so uh, it's very easy to deploy. So it's either JavaScript or backend API calls. Uh, it's all sort of SSL, so if you make RESTful API calls and, and you can parse JSON or XML, uh, you're really there. Uh, we have a whole range of uh, Stratosphere pricing capabilities, really how big's your website, what features of our platform are you going to use. Uh, but compared to engineering yourself, there, there's really um, no uh, comparison at all. I mean, a, a, head, a loaded engineer in the Bay Area um, is, is way more than our typical price, selling price. So. Yeah. Um, and then that just gets me, gets my user, Rocky, or whoever, into my website and I know who they are. What else can I do? Can I, sure. can I store unique information about them, you know, whether he likes cupcakes or steak or what? Absolutely. So that, that's the unique benefit of uh, having us as a platform. So we'll start with a base schema. Um, it, it is large enough to store what comes from the social provider. So anything you see in Facebook, you can store. Anything you see in Google and Yahoo, Microsoft, uh, Foursquare, we can store that. But there is unique fields you're going to want for your application. We have a nice API for you to create that, that schema change. We can do it for you. We can work on the validation for your registration forms. That's one of the big things we believe is that uh, validate your data. So if you're going to store this data about the user, let's not have it be messy and let's have you know nice AJAX validation right on the screen so the user can breeze right through. So we'll handle all that for you. Very cool. Um, and so there's a authentication piece, there's a storage piece, yep. right? So I can I can shove stuff into your and storage. And pull it back out. There's uh, nice APIs, so if you want to know, you know, who who was here yesterday and also likes cupcakes, great. That's a nice query of your user database. Um, and uh, you might want to create a program around that. You might want to send those guys emails. You might want to, um, you know, message to them next time they come back. 
So if I can figure out that somebody likes barbecue, can I say show all the friends of friends who also like barbecue? Absolutely. That's the cool piece about this social data now being part of the web experience is you're able to leverage that. Uh, if you're going to write that database yourself, you have all sorts of issues on scale and how you, how you lay it out. Um, again, our platform, we, we sort of had the, the ability to see this is where the world's moving and create nice, easy APIs to get to that data. Yeah, and then there's a single sign-on piece. So if I'm, you know, mm -hmm. Robert Scoble only has one website, right? Or one, today. one app today, yeah. right? You know, but if I'm Disney or Universal Films or something like that, I probably have hundreds of uh, different properties and I want to make sure that I can move you from one to the next without having you sign in and stuff like that. Absolutely. Do you guys do that so too? We do. We have a single sign-on product as part of our platform. Uh, really, um, at a high level, is anything where the user shouldn't have to log in again, let's, let's make them so they're known. So you sign in once to a user experience. If I move over to an affiliated site, it could be a partner, it could be a site I own. Uh, if I use a widget on the page uh, that's maybe served by another partner, um, that identity of the user and everything you know about them should travel with that profile. So certainly uh, you can do this today, but it's very tough to get the security and to get partners to agree on the protocol. Why not have it just operate on a standard and come baked into the platform? What is the standard that you guys have So we use OpenID on? underneath uh, for moving a user profile between uh, websites. OpenID is a nice open standard. Google, Yahoo, uh, there's an OpenID foundation which promotes it. Um, and it's evolving. There's an OpenID Connect, which is the next generation uh, coming out later this year. And for the discussion between widgets on my site, there's another standard. For there that. is. It's called Backplane. And it's just emerging, but it's beautiful. Um, the ability for in-page widgets to communicate securely and efficiently amongst themselves is, uh, is you just have to have it for this next generation of components. And uh, Backplane is a free, open standard. Um, there's a, a dozen partners that are now supporting it. And uh, it allows a user to log into any one of the widgets, as an example, and they're logged in everywhere. Um, and by reverse, if they log out of one widget, well, they can be logged out everywhere, too. And that's really just a tip. Uh, there'll be richer and richer messages that will be passed around uh, in future versions of Backplane. Very cool. So when I'm developing a new kind of service, like, like Travis at Uber developed this new thing that lets people uh, watch uh, or get a new taxi in San Francisco, it's what cool do app. I? Yeah, it's very cool. App. What do I need to think architecturally now in this new world where I can let people sign in through a third-party provider? Yeah. Well, from a startup, you don't have a legacy user base. You're starting from scratch, and, and that makes things much easier. You can just, you know, uh, really, if you're going to use a Genrain platform for user management, you go get that, and then you start building your app, and you don't worry about uh, these other pieces. Uh, there's a lot of our customers who uh, have been in business for a number of years, have legacy users, um, and, and that's not difficult, but it adds another component where you want to put that data now into this centralized repository. Often it'll be multiple websites that you, you want to consolidate. You've started a blog here, people registered. You have a main site, people registered. Well, you're not leveraging that user if you don't know they're the same user across yeah. those two different platforms. So uh, that, that is a, a whole other component of this, is to see your user wherever they may be. Yeah. One problem with uh, using these new kinds of authentication types is uh, if, if I signed into your service in the old days with an email address and a password, and then I come over and I see a cute Facebook button, I want to sign in with my Facebook button, and a lot of times it doesn't work. Do you guys take care of that? Yeah. With, you know, sort of merging of accounts? Because yeah. I, I like to use the <laughs> Facebook button now to sign in. And a lot of times it doesn't, on a lot of sites it doesn't work. It, yeah. it forces me to go back to my email address and remember my old password. Exactly. Like no, no. That, that's why you should be hand coding this because that's a tricky dance. Uh, it's a dance that comes with our platform. We've solved that and we can walk a customer through how to implement account merging. Uh, and, and there's multiple uh, things you have to do in order to do that right. But, but certainly, um, people have Facebook and they have Twitter and they have Google. And uh, if they come through independently, you really want that user to be treated as a single individual. Yet you want to gain everything you know about them so that you can send something to their Facebook wall, you can send something to their Twitter stream, and you know their Gmail address. Okay, that's great. And so um, managing that is, is tricky to do yourself. But again, it's, uh, and it's not easy for us, but we've done it once and can deploy it across you know, hundreds of customers. Yeah. I, a, a lot of times, I, I try out so many services, I get tired of having to fill in these right. forms. And is there any way to make it simpler for users so that they can just click on a, a button and instantly sign in yeah. without having to put a password in and yeah. having to put in all their preferences and stuff no, like that? No, you're right. I think a lot of websites blow it by having long registration forms. And uh, again, we have a um, you know deployment team that works with the customer to say, okay, well, what social data do you get? Let's get them in and, and we can progressively learn more about them and ask the user later. But I think you're exactly right. Long registration forms uh, cause people to abandon the website. 
starting with a third-party account that you already have with a profile that you already built is a good first start. It removes, re you know, rekeying that data. Uh, but I think really the trick is to um, use what you have and keep going. And that's really part of our consultation services is to, um, we want our, our customer's website to actually um, engage with more users. This is a bigger problem on mobile, at, at least on the iPhone, because mm -hmm. these apps are separate little silos. And so I have to sign into this app, yeah. and then this app, yeah. and this app, and if I sign in this app, this app doesn't know I signed in. Yeah. You see this all the time when you're clicking through into a web page from a, an app, yep. it, it asks you to sign on to Facebook again. Is there yep. a way to make this better for mobile? It, it is evolving in mobile. Um, it, it's not a complete story yet, but we do have SDKs uh, for mobile, and our, um, our, our web widgets are, are mobile aware, so they render differently, and if you turn the phone, the, the widget turns to, uh, all which is sort of becoming commonplace. Yeah. Uh, but there, I think there will be single sign-on. You're starting to see it a little bit with the Android, with the Google account, um, and Facebook's doing uh, some interesting things there to to alleviate that. I think the, the trick, and this is what we tell our, our, our customers, is to um, consider the phone a very personal device. So if they do identify themselves once, uh, don't time that session out. You know, Robert can take phone calls there, so don't log Robert out of the app. Um, allow him to do it once in his life and really store that persistently. Interesting. Um, tell me about the competitive landscape, because I assume you're not the only guy doing authentication and identity management, and how, how should a developer decide between the yeah. different players in this world? It's funny, on, on the user management platform, we really are alone. Uh, it's a brand new space, this the whole idea of outsourcing your user database. Uh, a year ago, um, you know, it was very tough sell, now it's becoming a little more common. But it's not a space that you, know, you see the analyst cover, uh, it's not like CRM where it's a category and say, well, everyone has a CRM system, what is it? Or a CMS system or something like that. Um, I do think you're, this is uh, going to be a very competitive landscape. Uh, it makes sense to outsource this. It's a messy security prong, scaling problem um, that, that you really shouldn't be coding yourself. And not only that, someone can do it better, faster, cheaper. Um, but certainly, uh, from a platform standpoint, we don't want into a lot of uh, solutions out there. Now, individual products, of course, there's, there's people who do that. Um, from build it yourself, everyone say, well, I can do the Facebook button. Um, yeah. And they probably can do just the Facebook. That's what they want. We have lots of evidence that you want to start taking more than just one or two providers. There, there's a, um, a, a real good uh, stratosphere of, of uh, provider uses. Uh, but really from a platform standpoint, we don't run into people with the exact same solution uh, we have. I have a feeling you're going to be an acquisition target soon. Yeah. Uh, well, here's why. You know, Salesforce, Rackspace, Microsoft, yeah. all these bigger companies are uh, needing these services to offer to our customers as hosting, right? Why? Uh, what's going to get you to sell? <laughs> um, what's the well, number? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, or what's your plan for the yeah. future? So, know? part of my history is uh, I started a company in the '90s in the Bay Area, um, and we sold it to Yahoo. It was, Ro it was Rocket Mail, which became Yahoo Mail, yeah. and uh, that was just a great experience. It was good for the employees. It was good for the product. Yahoo was able to, to really put the jazz on. It was good for the investors uh, as, as well. So, I think if you have all three of those agreement, um, those constituents where there's no conflict, uh, that's what makes a good acquisition. Uh, but having done that, um, the mindset here is not to, to flip, and we're, we're um, structured in a way, it's funny because we're, we're out in Portland, we actually, you know, it rains nine months of the year, we stay in and code, and we like what we're doing, and, uh, you know, we're about 100 employees, so we're still small, but we, we're getting to the point where we have good scale. Um, it's absolutely, we do not walk up and down the halls thinking, how do we look good to Rackspace, how do we look good to, to Google as an acquisition? Uh, we want to work with all those guys, and we have lots and lots of partners. Uh, we don't partner yet with Rackspace, but um, you know. We'd love to talk there, about There's that. another hour here we can uh, you know, <laughs> get there. We'd love to talk about yeah. that, because I think it's, as more and more people build apps and build things for the web, they're going to need these kinds of uh, sign-on systems, right? Yeah, no, absolutely, and we are getting into the fat platform uh, software guys, some people like Engine Yard. Um, and uh, sort of the, um, the Heroku's and the, the PHP fogs of the yep. world who actually offer an app stack, well, we are a component of that, and as you're devel developing sort of a something to hand a developer to jumpstart, um, even though it may be OS level, they're, they're, they're interested in app level stuff too, and, and uh, so we have a, a definite role there. Very cool. What's, uh, what else are you seeing happen in this space? Because this is a hot space for a number of different reasons. Mobile's hot, tablets are hot, uh, social is hot, right? Uh, Ron Conway was an economist yesterday talking about it, that he yeah. he sees it's just beginning the social revolution, yeah. right? And you're in the middle of 
all of those uh, things. So what are you seeing happen, and what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. All those are hot. Um, I think uh, we don't sort of bill ourselves as a huge social play. We do a lot of social stuff. We enable a website to be more social, but we think of ourselves as more infrastructure, that we are providing a platform service for um, so something that, that, whether it's social or whether it's, you know, um, email based or whether it's you know traditional advertising we want to be that hub that is sort of the um, centralized place where all these uh, uses of data plug into so uh, what do I think the future is I think uh, first of all people are going to be just like you said where they're going to demand that passwords get removed from websites and that uh, uh, interacting with websites is, is has a lot less friction and so they are who they are to sort of um, you know in the big picture they're logged onto the internet and this identity dial tone carries them uh, and exposes the profile they want to expose uh, with a lot less friction than, than even there is today um, and I do think the the use of data from websites is going to increase a lot so I mean I go to a lot of websites they know I'm a male do you know is the content any different than my wife sees no I think that's going to change on Pinterest um, it is um, well <laughs> So, <laughs> no, there's so, you know, there's, there's lots of different applications and, and content, and, and I shouldn't classify all of them, but yeah. I think the use of data um, is hard right now, and that's going to change, and, and part of our platform is to make it easier to sort of say, well, let's tailor the content, let's tail tailor the ad, let's tailor the experience to what we know about the user, and by the way, we want to uh, get a little more, you know, knowledge about the user. He took a poll. Okay, well, great, I know he's a Republican. Let's store that somewhere so I can actually cater to him better. Yeah. Tell me about, like, Lady Gaga uses your service. Tell me what that looks like and, and uh, how, that, how that works. A absolutely. I know that's your favorite artist. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, no, so, Put um, on my poker <laughs> face, right? <laughs> uh, Lady Gaga is an artist uh, run by Universal Music. Universal Music is, is a great customer of ours, and we're deployed on about 100 of their websites. So they have all these different artists, which are really different storefronts, and um, you know how artists are. They have their own content and, and want their website to look different. What Universal Music wanted to do was to actually leverage a user, no matter where they were on that site. They wanted to create an environment where they could plug in different vendors for components because uh, you know, some artists want a nice robust form, some want real-time streaming, uh, some want to sell their t-shirts online, and they wanted to create an ecosystem that uh, allowed them to assemble these websites without a whole lot of pain. And uh, Universal Music has two engineers, software engineers. Yeah. So the way they, they do it is they use third-party vendors. That's why, I mean, that's what we pattern the small teams, big impact yeah, thing I around, see the posters right? all over the place. Um, no, it's exactly that. And so uh, what they wanted to do is create an ecosystem where the identity of the user and that profile was so available to these other vendors that it made plugging in and extending and continuing to innovate very, very easy. So um, we're deployed there. Uh, when a user logs in, they go through a third-party account they already have, so they're not creating a brand new account with a new password. We're storing that data, Jan Rain platform, but it, it looks like Universal Music. Every website's registration screen is skinned differently and has different attributes uh, that the user gets to know. And then, as you know, you said you talked to Echo. Well, Echo's on a bunch of, of Universal uh, Music's websites. The login magically gets passed to them, and the user's logged on and able to um, participate in a real-time conversation through the Echo platform because they logged into the Jan Rain platform. So it's a beautiful experience. Uh, Universal Music's able to uh, cross-promote artists, so they uh, can put a Justin Bieber link on the Lady Gaga page, and then when I go to that website, even though it looks like a completely different uh, entity, uh, it knows who I am, and any intelligence that uh, is gathered there gets stored in the central repository. Very, very so, smart So stuff. really, um, yeah, it, and, and like I said, they have two engineers, and they're able to stitch together hundreds of websites that are very interactive and uh, very media rich. Very cool. How are you guys funded? So we are venture funded. Uh, we raised a Series A uh, in 2009 uh, with um, three sort of Series A um, uh, venture capitalists, all great. And then we raised a Series B last uh, August with Emergence uh, here in the Bay Area. Uh, it was a $15 million round, So uh, and they're great. Emergence is um, a unique venture capital firm that only does SaaS software. So they funded Salesforce and SuccessFactors and Yammer and Lithium and Lotomy. And so we fit that model really well. And it also gives us a portfolio we can ask, well, you know, they're, they're approaching the same problems. Uh, they've already hit a lot of the same problems that, that we're hitting as a SaaS vendor. Uh, so it's, a, it's just a great relationship. Very and cool. it's also good money. Very cool. Sounds like you're on a rocket ride in 2012. Should Hope be so. really good for you. Hope so. We've grown a lot. We, uh, last January, we were 30 people. Now we're about 100. Uh, and we look to grow modestly in uh, 2012 and sign on a lot of brand customers. 
Very cool. Where can we find uh, you guys on the web? Sure, janrain.com is a great starting spot. Uh, shows all our products and how to interact uh, with them, get a copy uh, for evaluation, or talk to a salesperson. And you, you personally on Twitter or wherever, where do we find so you? So Jan Rain has a Twitter account, uh, Jan Rain at uh, Twitter, and then Larry Drevis, all one word, at Twitter. Right. I don't tweet a lot, but uh, happy to follow and be followed. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.